if I got every word perfectly weighted on a thin piece of paper? Would it make any difference? Would it change for the better if I wrote you a poem? If I posted a letter? So recently I was asked on Facebook by one of you lot to do a tutorial sort of introduction video to long exposure photography with the Olympus EM1 Mark II. So, no prizes for guessing what we're doing in today's video. An introduction to long exposure photography with my Olympus EM1 Mark II. Let's take this first photograph and I'll talk to you a little bit more about how I did it once I've shown you it. So F11, 10 seconds, ISO 200 with a 10 stop filter on, two second timer, here we go. So when I come out and do this long exposure photography, the first thing I'm looking at are the weather conditions on the day. Now, today's very overcast, it's very dark, there's no light about. So we're looking for natural contrast in the landscape where I am. And the photograph I showed you, I chose the location and the composition I did because there was a lot of lights and darks in there. The main cliff face being the main subject of the photograph is extremely light compared to the foreground around it. Off to the left hand side of the frame you have the beach with all the seaweed which from up here it creates a nice dark texture with some lighter cliffs in the background and obviously towards the right hand side of the frame all of the turbulence in the water is creating a lot of foam on the sea surface which again gives it some nice contrast. I chose a 10 second exposure for this photograph because well, it's a bit windy, so there's a lot of chop on the water. And while the chop creates some really nice, fun patterns and textures in the water, sometimes it can just be a little bit too much, a little bit too distracting. If I had chose a faster shutter speed and tried to freeze a lot more of that motion, you would have had a very distracting sea surface. And I opted just to go for a longer exposure, just to smooth some of that out. So there's the thought process. So let me show you around the back of the camera and I'll show you all the settings and all the thoughts going on in my head when taking the photograph. So this is the back of the camera and I'm going to show you how I set this photograph up. So down here we have the shutter speed which is at 10 seconds, we have the aperture which is at f11 and sometimes over here you see the ISO, it's not currently showing but that is set to 200. Now it's a very grey flat day, you can see there's no light on the photograph so I'm thinking, well, black and white photography. And this camera has a great tool which allows you to get something of a preview. There's colour profile, so it's currently set up a natural. So if I switch this to monochrome, I can now see a monochrome preview of my photograph. If I clear the screen a little bit for you, you can see now, so you can see all of the natural contrast. So all of this foreground is really dark. The cliff's a little bit lighter. You have the dark cliffs in there and you have the light sky and all the water and it shows you all of the fun contrast in there. But another fun thing you can do with this camera is if you crop down here, you can actually throw an S-curve on to throw some more contrast in, similar to what I would do in post. Now this doesn't affect the RAW file, this just affects the JPEG and the preview, but I can now see what I'm going to do. So if I throw the info button on again, you can see this is really underexposed all of the foreground now, which is great because that's what I was going to do in post anyway. I'll throw a radial filter over the cliff face just to raise the exposure on that to make it pop off. And there we go, two second timer, 10 seconds, that's how it's done. So for this second photograph, I've moved down into Selwick Bay and there is this rock formation. It's like an old sea stack just standing there waiting to have its photograph taken. Now we're currently a little bit after low tide, so I'm waiting now for the tide to come in. I've got a composition set up. I've got the tripod in place while there's no water just to keep my feet a little bit drier than they may get a little bit later on, but we've got a composition set up. We're just waiting for the tide. So while we're waiting for the tide, let's talk about ND filters for long exposure photography. So this is my filter kit that I carry around with me in my camera bag, and this is what helps me do these long exposures during the middle of the day. So a brief introduction as to how it works. There's an adapter ring in the case. This screws onto the front of your lens, and this is where everything else attaches to. Attaching to that, we have the filter holder. There's a little wheel on the back, it locks in place. So you slide the catch, slot it over the front of the adapter ring, let go, it locks in place. 
And then inside of here, I have three ND filters. I have a three stop, a six stop, and a 10 stop filter. So this is the 10 stop filter. So how does this work? Well, this blocks out 1000 times the light that your initial exposure will give you. So do you know when you set your camera up on your tripod and you get your meter reading, it gives you a shutter speed, doesn't it? If you slow this down by a thousand times, that's essentially what that's doing. It's blocking a thousand times the light that's coming through and hitting your center. And that's how you get these long exposures during the middle of the day. The three stop is great for sort of late night, really, really low light. If you just want to slow things down a little bit more, I would use the six stop more at sunset and sunrise when there's a little bit of light kicking off, but you still want to slow the shutter speed down some more. And I use the 10 stop kind of in the middle of the day like this. It's not a bright sunny day, but there is still an awful lot more light around than there would be during the midday. So these filters are great for long exposure photography. That's what blocks all the light and that's what slows the shutter speed down. Now, because this video is centered around this Olympus EM1 Mark II, there is a cool little trick that you can do with this camera, which enables you to take long exposure photographs without the need for ND filters. Now, I have thrown a polarizing filter on the front of this. I'll be transparent here. There's a polarizer on the front of it. It will block a little bit of light, maybe around a stop, but not enough to really mess this whole theory up. It's just to take a little bit of glare off the wetness and all of the water that's shining through. It's using something called Live Comp. So let me explain to you how this works and I'll show you it in practice. All right, so let's take a photograph using a live comp mode. Now, on the Olympus EM1, it is attached to the shutter speed. So if you keep scrolling past 30, 40, 50, 60 seconds, you get live bulb, live time, and finally you get live comp. Now, this is going to overexpose the sky, basically, because of the way that the light is today and the settings I've chosen. So we're F11, ISO 6400. The shutter speed is going to be half a second, which is going to put me 1.3 seconds overexposed. You can see the sky is going to completely overexpose anyway. I'm not too bothered about that because, well, the sky is essentially white, so it doesn't really matter too much. So if we press the shutter button once, that's going to take a base photograph. And now what it's going to do, it's going to overlay all of the lighter parts of the pixels on the next series of photographs on top of that and output a raw file with the look of a long exposure photograph. You can see it's counting up a half second here 10 frames taken, six seconds have elapsed. So as long as I keep this shutter open, if I take, let's call it 40 exposures on this, that'll give us roughly a 20 second exposure. There's 30, 33, 34, 36, 37, 40. That should give us something that looks akin to a 20 second photograph. If I show you this on the back of the camera, there's the histogram, completely clip the sky but we have got the long exposure look in the water in the foreground. All right, so now the tide's coming in a little bit more. I've moved a little bit higher up, but we've got a little bit more water to play with now. And I really want to show you how I use this in this final photograph and this final technique that I use to take long exposure photos with this camera. It's very similar to the previous technique only i'm going to be doing it and not the camera so let me explain so while the last photograph overexposed the sky because we we're somewhat allowing the camera to make the decisions for us this time we're going to properly expose a series of photographs and we're going to stack them when we get home in photoshop to create the same look and the same effect and it's essentially the same thing as the camera's just done only we're just taking back a little bit more control we're going to take a bunch of photographs using the high speed mode but we're going to expose these photographs properly as per the histogram, which is going to give us all of the correct information. And as we lay them up in Photoshop when we get home, it's just going to create all the movement in the water and give us that long exposure look that we're looking for. So let me show you how I do this on the back of the camera. So once again, allow me to show you what I'm doing on the back of the camera. So we've got F11, ISO 200, and a 13th of a second. And I'm just going to wait for a wave to roll across. The camera's in high speed sequential mode, and as the wave rolls across, I'm just going to hold the shutter button down and it's just going to take a series of photographs. You can see as the photographs have been taken, all of that movement and all of that swirling in the water. And that's what's going to give the long exposure look. So I'm going to go home now, start this in Photoshop, and I'll show you the resulting image. So there we go, just an introduction to how I take long exposure photographs using my Olympus EM1 
my two. Now, obviously, these photographs look a hell of a lot better at sunrise, at sunset, when you've got big wide angle lenses on, you can stretch foregrounds and really make things swirl around. But I just wanted to show you more the technique of how I do it rather than the photographs today. So I hope that helps and answers the question as the ways that you can do long exposure photography on Olympus EM1 Mark II. If you found the video helpful, please do give it a like and a thumbs up. It does help the video and brings new viewers to see my content. And if you liked it more than that, there is a subscribe button below me. You can press that and you'll see more nonsense from me every single week. But for now, I'm going to get out of here because the tide's rising and I don't want to lose a camera.